Now, as we have our table ready, I will begin writing the factories so we can fill some dummy data. So I will go to the recipe factory and I will begin writing each column so we can fill it with the dummy data. I will use the faker library so we can fake some dummy data. I will begin for the title to have a sentence with certain amount of words. The default is six, but let's make it just a little bit more random. So I will use the empty round function so we can go between like maybe three to eight sentences. And for the excerpt, let's have maybe a text again by default it will has like 200 characters which is decent for the excerpt as default it has 200 characters which is really good as an excerpt just below that we have the instructions and for the instructions i'm going to use perhaps a real text look a little bit just reasonable and the same thing i will do for description but let's make this one like 800 characters below that we have the notes I will go maybe just a little bit less, maybe, which is the default. Yeah, no need to write 200. The preparation time, it's going to be a random. So we can make something a little bit more realistic. So I will go with a random element and I will simply pass an array of the values. So I will do it very quickly so you don't have to see me doing it. And I will do the same thing for cooking as well. Now I will do the serving and the servings are going to be almost the same exact thing. But let's just make a little bit of sense by simply writing for two, four, and six. Now let's do the YouTube URL. So for the YouTube URL, I'm going to have just some random YouTube recipes. Now when it comes to the featured ad, we know for a fact that not all recipes are going to be featured, right? So let's have one more random element and I will simply have an array of like true and false. If this is true, then let's make it as the current timestamp by using this helper function. This will give us exactly the full date and time. If it's not, then let's leave it as null, which means only the featured recipes are going to be timestamped as featured at now. Otherwise, it will stay as null. Now I will do the flags. So I will begin by low carb. And if it's a low carb, then just a flag as a yes or no. You don't have to see me do the other ones, so I'm gonna do it really quickly. And this actually marks the end of our factory. Now we defined our cookie cutters, if you remember from our intro. Now we just have to use the seeder in order to seed the database. So I will just have the recipe model and then I will generate using the factory any amount you wish. So let's say maybe a hundred. And now let's just create them. So with this, we defined everything except the last step. Please remember this step. You have to take the seeder and just have to call it inside the database seeder. Larvae by default gives us two examples, but in my case, I generated an external seeder. So in order to call our seeder, we just have to go here and we just have to use the call function and pass an array with every seeder that we have. In my case, I just have this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and call it. And believe it or not, this is it. So we can simply go ahead to our terminal and I can just use artisan again to do database and seed. Oops, I ran into an issue. Okay, let's say it's an unknown column carbs. So obviously I incorrectly wrote the name. Indeed, is low carb. So let's get back to the factory, fix this tiny issue and try again. Okay, it worked just fine. So immediately let's hit our database and refresh. And indeed we have right now 100 recipes. And that's it. In this case, we learned how to write a migration file you learned by now how to make a factory and how to make a database seeder and how to call them here. And then finally, the last step would be just running the database seed command. If you are just curious like me, if you were to run it again, simply it will generate 100 more recipes. So you can see it here. This marks the end of the section. I'm so excited about copying the files from the HTML into our Laravel application and simply begin blade templating our layout.